want to go with Jason Shaw and Shane Van Boning. The Moscone Cup legend that is Niels Fine has got a big smile on his face. Niels, you are absolutely loving this just as a spectator, having experienced it as a player so many times. And you look at all the events this year that have brought crowds back. This is one of those where you really feel it more than most. Yeah, thanks, Michael. If this doesn't give you goosebumps as a fan with all the singing and the crowds back into it, you know, then you're not a pool, a new, not a pool player, or not a pool lover. But uh, it's time to kick it off, Michael. Good crowd in at Alexandra Palace tonight. I expect it will build as the week goes on. Let's hope for a full house and a big, big finish on Friday night. Of course, we didn't get to the Friday night last year because it was so one-sided. There's been a lot of talk that the Americans are just hoping to make it a bit more respectable this time round. Don't believe a word of it. They are here with one thing and one thing only on their minds to bring back the Moscone Cup. Track number one, Team USA. Let's get it on. Still early days, as you can see, the table's still a bit slidey. That Wombo kind of hung up, but it felt the last second. Giving Shane the first open shot on the two, which actually goes here in the corner. And make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen, these players at this moment are under extreme pressure. They've been living up to this event for weeks and now they can finally go out into the arena and maybe all you're gonna do is hit a couple of balls you have to wait for your turn like Chris Reinhold there in the chair he's fifth he has to wait about 20 minutes before it's his turn great shot there by Shane by the way getting on the three ball well they've spent so much of the year just trying to prove their worth in terms of even getting into the team in the first place. Only five players on each side. So if you have a bad year, no matter who you are, you can miss out. But it all feels worth it, all that effort to make the team when you're sitting down there in the heat of Moscone battle. Big shot here, Michael. Tough shot to judge the speed. So he came a bit short there on this five. I believe he can still swing it around the table. He has to come back for the green six at the bottom of your screen. And this is a massive opening rack here for USA. If Shane can run out here, he's going around the table. Very nicely judged. Has to slow down now though. Doesn't want to end up straight in. Not much angle on that one. Exactly what you were saying, Niels. He didn't want to be straight on us. No, now he looks like he's still going forward. At a slight angle. Nice shot there. This is the big shot, Mike. He's got to stay down on this one. If he can make this, he's really out of the woods. We've seen a few of these balls, Niels, only just wriggle in. And these pockets are tight. This is going to be a feature of the week. Four-inch pockets. Very tough. Still slidey. But what a performance here by Shane right out of the gate. That was not an easy rack. Judged the speed of the table very well. And the Americans have got the first point on the board without Europe even having hit a ball yet. We are aware, Niels, that the Moscone is an event that maybe is a one-time only nine-ball experience in the year for some people. Maybe some are watching it for the first time. And if you are, welcome along to our sport. And I think it's worth just having a quick run through that what it's all about. It's all about who pops that nine-ball. No matter what happens, the rest of the rack, obviously players are looking out for combinations. You've always got to hit the lowest value ball remaining on the table. What I mean by a combination is, if the lowest value ball is, say, a three, and you use that to then knock the nine in, 
That's a valid shot, and you win the rack. So they're the basics of it. Of course, at this level, Mills are always looking to break and run, just as Shane Van Boning did there. That's going to hurt Jason Shaw. Absolutely, and also what's very notable for people that are just joining in, maybe for the first time, in snooker, it's a very passive open break. You just want to open a couple of reds and the cue ball back down table. In pool, you want to blast these nine balls open and try to make one or two or more. Control the cue ball in the middle of the table or... Oh, look at this. Ooh, that went close to the, to the corner. Albin is opting for a cut break. So he's sending the cue ball to the side rail there. And then wants to get to the middle of the table to create some different action on the balls. But in essence, you want to create as much movement into the entire rack to try to make one, get a shot, and hopefully stay in control or even run out. Alban Ocean is the world champion. He won it for the second time this year. And he's been the player of the year, really. Started off so well for him, winning the Championship League in Milton Keynes that you were very much a part of, Niels. Played 52 matches along the way to win it. And if that doesn't set you up for the year, I don't know what does. He's kicked on so well from there. And Europe will be looking for him to be an on-table leader this week. Got very fortunate there. Miss hit the one. Tough shot. And he's hooked his opponent. Skyler. And the absolute worst thing here is, is that the three came totally next to the cue ball. That means that he has no option to go and hit that other side rail. He has to bend around it. But, as we see here in example, after making contact with the lowest numbered ball, you have to hit a cushion with the object ball or the cue ball. He failed to do that, so now Alvin gets what's called ball in hand. He can place the cue ball anywhere on the table, and after that kind of misjudged first shot, he gets ball in hand, so he's got to feel very fortunate. Yeah, this is an important moment, even at such an early stage. The Europeans, in the form of Jason Shaw, sat out the opening rack. Golden chance here now for the world champion to hit back straight away, ball in hand. I think most of the time players would expect, whatever the situation, they would run out from there. So big moments these for Alban Ocean. Playing some field goal position there. Placing the cue ball where you can shoot in between these two balls towards the three, shaking his head a bit. I think he got rather straight on this three. Now it's much harder to go pass that nine ball towards the side pocket wow. and get on the four. So he's opting for a draw shot. Nicely judged. And he's back in line now. What's funky about this one, this green six, in his mind now, is the size of a watermelon. Because it's <laughs> laying next to that corner pocket. He has to pocket it in the same pocket where that green six is. He doesn't want to hit it. So he has to focus really on aiming well here. So he took outside of the pocket. Still in beautiful position. Should mention his opponent, Skylar Woodward, was MVP. Most valuable player in the American wins of 2018 and 2019. Only the second player ever to claim that in consecutive Moscone Cups. You might just remember the first man to do it, Niels, because, of course, it was you. But last year, such a disappointment for Woodward. I think he epitomised, really, the way that week went for the Americans. Mm -hmm. Watch the eight ball. Interesting selection there. Flirted with making contact on the eight. He's not out of the woods yet. He's got to play with follow here. Some right spin, trying to get back towards the middle of the table. Nice shot, nice speed. That's got to settle him down. Reigning world champion. Went on to win the U.S. International. So he's a man. He's playing with a lot of confidence. Very composed. 
when you watch him in this mode, Niels, he just looks so serene and in control of the situation. He can have his fiery moments, though, and things don't go entirely his way. But I think they have in this rack. He's had a little bit of fortune, perhaps, along the way. But the key thing is, Alvin Ocean has beaten Skylar Woodward to level at one rack apiece. So we should talk a bit, Niels, about the importance of this opening team match because for everyone to be part of a win right at the start of the contest, or well, everyone's involved, even if you don't win your rack, you're out there with the team claiming a point. It can be so important for establishing a bit of early momentum. Yeah, really good point there. Like you say, the biggest thing is that you get out there, you can get rid of those early match jitters, uh, you feel the crowd, you get a feel of the table, you see maybe the other guys playing on the table if you don't get many shots. Um, I'm telling you, these guys, this match is really tough. You know, they look calm and collected, but now, for That's example, AJ, now, Joshua's up next. He's been waiting for two racks, and now it's his turn. So he's climbing that roller coaster now. He's getting in, on board, strapping up, and there's no way back. And Jason, for example, that's the interesting dynamic. He hasn't hit a ball yet, but he will. He will start playing in about 10, 15 minutes. And then he's got to be ready again. So now he's totally mellow because it's not his turn. But once player number five is up, David, then he's next. And he's going to be feeling it again. So the dynamics are very interesting in this format. This is Tyler Steyer back in the American team. And he's the only player, as we watch that cue ball flirt with the pocket there, the only player on either team who has won every Moscone Cup he's been involved in. He's only played in two. And the Americans come out on top on both occasions. What's he got here, Nils? He's in a tricky situation because he snookered on the one. As you can see, the three balls covering the one ball, the yellow one. So there's an option after the break where you can do anything you want. You can make contact with any ball on the table and call a push out. What that means, like see here, he made the eight. People think what's happening here. It's a push out. It's a tactical option. His opponent now can say, I'm going to take this shot on or I'm going to give it back to Tyler. And that's basically in this sport, the only time when you're really playing your man, your opponent, you're going to be thinking, is he good at maybe going off the rails before contacting this one ball? Is he good at maybe jumping? So Joshua's challenging Tyler here. He says, you know what? I don't like this shot. I'm going to give it back to you because maybe I don't think you're going to do well. So this here is a tricky shot for Tyler. He hit it very well. But did he leave a gap? No. Yeah, there's a lot of psychology involved, playing mind games perhaps with your opponent in that push-out situation when you've got to make the decisions. And, of course, it's also important to know about the strengths and weaknesses of your opponent in making those assessments. It's an interesting little subplot to the game. Joshua Filler from Germany. He's been world champion. He's been US Open champion. He made contact with the one hit the rail but he's left a very makeable shot here for Tyler with a natural angle to go back up table for the two ball again so this is a great opportunity for Team USA Ooh. still sliding in there landed fairly straight on this two he's got to put some action into this cue ball now to get back for the three think he's going to play it with some stun. Hit off the rail. Nicely done. Back in position. Steyer is back in the venue where he made his Moscone Cup debut three years ago. He got USA's first point on the board, actually. And we're 2-0 down at that stage. And that was the start of the turnaround, which saw them go on to win, ending Europe's run of eight in a row. As I say, he was part of the team that then retained it the following year. Missed out last time. 
Comes in with a decent Moscone Cup pedigree. Yeah, he's a very solid young man. Great work ethics. Great technique. As you can see there, beautiful stroke. Going back to the side rail. Put himself back in good position. And what pool players like to do on a shot like this is go off the short rail, the bottom rail, and then back to the side rail and towards the middle of the table. That way you're coming into the line of position for your next shot, which is the seven ball. Here's one, two rails, and he's always going to be in that same line there that gives you really high percentage position play. And he's got basically a, a kind of a same seven ball that Shane had in the first rack. Stay down on this one. Well done. Got himself in a little bit of trouble with the break. But he played the push out scenario well. It all turned to his advantage. And when he got his opportunity, he's taken it well. All going with the break so far. The USA lead Europe by two racks to one in the opening team match. Opening night at Alexandra Palace, and all going according to plan at the moment in terms of we the break. Are in rack USA four. leading Europe by two Our racks to one. Score. And up next, Jeremy yeah. Jones, the American captain, a stand in at one. the last moment against in this young man, Eklund Katschi of Albania. Team Nils, it's so Great. hard to believe that Eklund Katschi is still only 22. 
<laughs> yeah, I have to admit, he looks a little older. <laughs> and, and it feels like he's been around for so long. Yeah, he's a very, very tough competitor. Put in all the work. Broke dry there, but snookered his opponent on the one. But uh, to mention it real quick, Eklund put in a lot of work in his uh, early years. Went to the U.S., played a lot of players, developed his game, and he's now turned into a young champion. Here is Jeremy Jones, Michael. Yeah, as we say, Earl Strickland is coming call. back into the team. That was the plan anyway, but for COVID reasons, he's had to pull out. So Jeremy Jones, the captain, as he was last year in Coventry, really left with no alternative but to step in. But he's a very You're experienced up. player You're himself. Up. Former US Open champion. He's been runner-up in the World Championship. Played in seven Moscone Cups. He was on the winning team in five of them. Made his debut the year Eklund Catchy was born. But, you know, what's interesting there, Michael. You could see the experience right out of the gate. Jeremy played that push-out that we just spoke about. He can hit any ball. And he played the three ball up and down the table there and put it next to the brown seven ball. Yeah. So what that means is the three doesn't go in any pocket now. So he's making it a tactical game right out of the gate. I really like his shot selection there. Eklund says, you know what? I don't like the shot. You shoot it. And Jeremy has to show what he's got right now. With this tough, long one ball. Well, that was just the sort of shot he didn't want in this situation. He's only just back in. He's not been playing competitive pool in recent times. He's really been thrown into it here. And you saw him there gesticulating with his arm, trying to get it going. But really putting some psychological pressure on the American captain there in a very direct way. But the good thing what he did, because he put that three ball there, he's kind of extending the game. The only thing that Eklund can do here is play for what's called a bank shot, if he still has that angle on the blue two, and that is to cross the three ball opposite in the other side pocket couple of tough shots I think he can do it see he's got the three now you think hey he has nothing to play for but he's got in snooker it's called a uh, double mm -hmm. in pool it's called a bank shot so he's gonna hit the side rail and pocket the three in that pocket where the one was at where his elbow is well, that was the idea Niels interesting that came short but this is far from easy michael for a man that hasn't been really competing at this level in these kinds of arenas to come with this tough long shot this would be really something if he, if he can knock this in extension please yeah no surprise at all he's taking the extension you're allowed one of those in every rack so that means you have 60 seconds instead of the usual 30. do also get 60 seconds on the first shot after the break Elevating the cue slightly, wants to draw it back. That makes the shot a bit tougher. You can really see the rustiness here. This is such a big ask of Jeremy Jones, but hang on. Oh, oof. It really is asking a lot, Niels, for him to come into this environment when you've not really been playing any sort of tournament pool, even outside of the big arena situation. I mean, it just doesn't look comfortable. He didn't miss it by far, though. He got a bit lucky on this shot. He snookered Kachi partially. Kachi tried to play the same thing, a bank shot. And again, he's leaving Jeremy with these tough long ones. Good thing here, he only has to stop it and then play a potential 4-8 combination in the top right corner. Yeah, just to reiterate and clarify what we were saying earlier, so long as you hit the lowest ba value ball on the table, you can use that to pot any other ball as a valid shot, and you stay at the table. If it's the nine ball, of course, you win the rack from it. That wiped his feet, but it went in. 
He'll be feeling a good bit better after that. It's all about settling in now, isn't it? The tricky part about this shot is that he has to cut the four ball a bit to his left in order to make the right contact on that eight ball. Can he hit that side of the four without hitting the rail first? If he hits the rail first, he's totally going to miss this combo. I think he can just do it. Or he's going to hit the rail and then the eight, like this. Oh, didn't want that to drop because he wouldn't have had a shot on the five ball. But what a chance it is now. And what a blow this would be for the Americans to strike not only their captain coming in at the last minute to beat someone who's playing in his fourth Moscone Cup, a real star of recent years for Europe. But this will be against the break as well. Nice shot there, went cushion first. Good speed control. Has to come with one more nice speed control shot off the side rail back a bit further than the middle of the table and then there's really no problem on the table anymore. So this is all about pressure management, Michael. It's only one rack, but what an effort it would be. Well, he's come a bit short there. He's come a lot short, a lot. I would say about half a meter short. And again, it's just the sort of shot you don't want when you're just trying to feel your way in. You're not familiar with this setting in recent times. This is a challenge. There you go. Cut it in, he's got to get straight on the seven because then he has to do nothing else. I think he still has a small angle. He's got to roll this in, come to the bottom rail and back out for the nine. Got to love the body language we're getting from him, Niels. He's telling us everything about the emotions he's going through here. This could be a really big moment. The positive energy that he can send through his own team here. Nice positive stroke. Went around the nine. Got to get off that rail. Yes, if he makes this nine ball, that's going to send a small message to Team Europe that he's come to play. What a big early moment as the captain comes to the table and delivers a point for the USA. It's now 3-1. And the first dry break of this Moscone Cup was the way that rack started. It has finished with America extracting full price. And look at the relief on Jeremy's face. He stuck out his tongue. You have to this take your hat off. You absolutely do, Niels, and this is some of what we saw from Jeremy Jones. In the end, after a nervy start, it was such an impressive rack for him. And when you have a tense rack like that, it always feels like the rack is worth just that bit more. A lot of body movement on, a, on many shots, but he got there. You see him sticking out his tongue. That is just really, really good, solid run out. The man just heard 24 hours ago that he has to play in the Moscone Cup while he was the captain. And that is not easy at all. As you see there, it's 13 years since he last played in the Moscone Cup. He only won one of his six matches that year. It was a defeat for the Americans. Meanwhile, scores 3-1. to one. Team USA breaking. Yeah, and this is Chris Reinhold. Now, you may think you're not familiar with the name, but you are with the face. Back well, last year, five, he was still known as Chris Robinson. He's changed his name now for family reasons. In favor of Team he was USA. one of the team USA bright spots, I suppose, break. in the American team last year. There were good signs from him on his debut. Now he's got to build on it, step up, and become a big contributor to this American team. Balls flying everywhere. A lot of variation in how the balls are reacting. See, all the balls going down table wasn't the best of racks. The way they were racked, they weren't that tight. But it makes it twice or even five times more interesting. We get to see push-outs. We get to see players playing tactical battles. Back and forth, shot making. Instead of just running out, boom, 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 boom. 
yeah, I mean, all that side of the game is great, but a bit of this is just what you need, I think, to really build up that tension between the teams early on. Played a slight passive shot there, just sending the Cuba up table, overhit it about oh, 30, 40 centimeters. He's almost on the line again. David Alcady of Spain, who'll be 43 next week. He's the only player on the European team never to have been on the losing side in a Moscone Cup. He's played in two. They won one. The other finished in a tie. Made his debut way back in 2006. Then waited 11 years to play again. And another four to get back oh. in for this appearance. Wow. Played a really nice shot, but the two ball inadvertently landed in front of the side and left Chris a very makeable jump shot. This is what you don't see in snooker players. He has a little jump cue right here, elevating the cue stick, shows the elevation. Oh, oh he's missed it wow. all together. And that wasn't easy to do, Niels, coming off the rail like that. I would have... I'm a bit shocked that he didn't even contact the ball. I thought he was really a good favorite to make that one. Here we get to see the elevation. A little bit too much hop. But the balls are still in a tricky position. David doesn't have an easy option for this pink four. Drawing back to shoot it in the same side pocket. Very good speed control there. The big question here, is he straight in? Because then all he has is a drawback shot for that purple five in the top corner. A bit short there. This is not easy on day one. He's been sitting in the chair for about half an hour. Yeah, just itching to get involved. Now that you're out there, you really want to start making your impact. Please. You want to be part of it. If your team is going to win, obviously that's the most important thing, but you want to contribute to this opening team match and your side winning it. And you really don't get much time to make your impact, so the pressure is so intense. Yes. Very good shot there by David. That was far from easy. All the way along that rail, tight pockets. Now he's in a great position. The only thing he doesn't want to do here is under hit this ball. He wants to try and get straight in on the seven or slightly above it so he can stay on this side of the table. Otherwise, he has to send the cue ball all the way around the table. He's in a great position. Yeah, good early signs from him. Very accomplished player. He's won the World Masters twice in recent years. And he's an all-rounder. He's been a world semi-finalist at 8-ball, multiple occasions at 10-ball, and this year in 9-ball. Which, of course, is this form of the game. Hitting the ball well, Michael. Yeah, he looks very well prepared, very sharp, straight away. And an important response here. Saving his team from going down 4-1. Yeah, and getting things back in line with the break because obviously the Americans won the last rack against the break. David Alcady has responded in kind and raises a fist to the crowd. He wants to get them going here. The Spaniard closes the gap to 3 2. Excellent performance there from David. Absolutely, Niels, and we cannot underestimate the importance of this opening team match. We talked about building the momentum. If you're on the winning side, then everyone on that team has been involved in a winning point right from the off. They don't need to get over that hurdle. And history suggests that if you win the opening team match, you're twice as likely to end the week holding the Moscone Cup as if you lose it. The stats bear it out over the years. Wow. You saw uh, Carl and Alex there joining their team. A bit of pep talk. That was a massive wreck. They're down now 3-2, and it's Shane against Jason again. If they would have lost that rack, it was 4-1. We've seen comebacks from 4-1 in the team event before, also last year, but still you're really up against it. 
Well, last year was extraordinary because Europe raced away into a 3 0 lead. Looked like it was going to go 4 0. And then Eklund Kachi brushed the second ball with his shirt. And the whole contest just changed. Tilly right. Thorpe dished up from there. Got USA off and running. They ended up winning Back five in a row. Number six. That's absolutely right. Our current Although, of course, score it didn't set the tone in any way for what followed because it was one of only three matches they won. Team Europe to break. Jason breaking a bit different than the other players. He moved the cue ball more to, towards the middle of the table. Made a ball on the side. What he has here, Michael, this is interesting. He can't really go offensive because there's not really a pocket for the one ball. Plus, he cannot play good shape on the blue two ball, but he can draw it straight back onto that eight and behind the three. And he could not have done it much better than that. And you see this four and nine, they are blocking the path towards this one. So Shane is in a heap of trouble. There's a real rivalry between these two, you know, and it's not just on the table. There's a personal edge to it, certainly from Shaw's side. I think that was added to last year. Shaw, of course, clinched the winning point against Van Boning. He really did own last year's Moscone Cup. MVP and the man to clinch the winning point. What he has here, he can go side reel, side reel, and really land onto this one ball very... Oh, I was going to say softly. Oh, very nice hit. He put some speed onto it. Try and create some separation. I think he's got Jason partially hooked again on this one. What a shot that was. Particularly in the context of that rivalry. That's like Van Boning saying, OK, I've seen what you've got, and I have some of it back. One, two... Hitting a third rail be before making contact, and the cue ball goes back and hits the side rail. I think he's got him hooked, Michael. He's got to bend around it. The good thing here, if he has to slightly bend around it, the cue ball will go naturally towards the blue two. And he could snooker in behind that blue two if he doesn't hit it too hard. That is what we call a resave. He could really do some damage with that. There. So he hits the right side of the one. And look at this. He's behind the two. And again, Shane steps to the table. He's got to come with a monster shot. Beautifully executed shot here from Jason. We're seeing some tactical fireworks. And the crowd are absolutely loving it. They're making their presence felt on their return. Bending around that ball, almost making the eight. Now, Michael, this is what Jason gets for playing a great shot. He's got to come with a super long, tough one ball. This is a test. When you look at the pure act of potting, he's one of the best there's ever been in the business. He needs to bring all of that to the fore here. Big moment. Wow, and it's super clean. Does he have enough room now to make the blue two? Hard to see on the screen. Maybe we can get a better camera angle if you can cut this in. I think he can. He's looking more at position, so that means he has good options here. No, wow. Surprised, Jason's normally so offensive. Another safety. Van Boning coming back to the table, Niels. He's played in 14 Moscone Cups. He's only won three of them. An absolute giant of the game. As indeed is the man in your picture there, Jason Shaw. The Moscone Cup has been a constant disappointment through his career. Watch out for that corner. People can say that was really unlucky, but that is actually a classic scratch, an in-off snooker terms. If you hit them too far on that two, it's going to just glide into that lane towards the corner. And on these slick conditions, it's going to just grab into the pocket. A 
great opportunity here for Team Europe to level it up for 3-3. And that's going to make it even more exciting. Fans are just hoping for that. Aren't we all? We want to see some tough, tight battles in these four days. Jason Shaw would have found that very hard to take, not even getting to the table in the opening rack. He'll have been sitting there, quietly seething, plotting his revenge. People are wondering, why did he do that? The camera angle showed you that the four was so close to the nine that he could, he could not make the correct contact to pocket the four. So he tried to go, I think he tried to go around them actually and play the four in the opposite corner, but went into the balls. Almost sent the four in front of the pocket. Here we can see that. No, he really tried to go into them. Bit unfortunate. Again, we see a safety. Oh, he left the four on, Michael. I think Shane can make this 4A combination. The only good thing is that this 5 6 in the middle of your screen are still tied up. So there's still play left in this rack. We've had such a narrative already. We've only been playing for about 40 minutes. So much has happened. Going off the rail. Tough cut on this four has to use the bridge. What is going on with this purple five? Can we get a close up if it goes into the side pocket? That is the key for this upcoming shot. Can he play position for the five in the side or are they too tied up? Shot. Must have a shot here. Or he would have never done that. He would try to open them up. That was a massive moment. Jason played the right shot. He just hit the point. Something happened. And there you see at this level, ladies and gentlemen, it can just flip in a heartbeat. It looks as though Shane Van Boning is going to take a rack off Jason Shaw for the second time tonight. And take his team to the hill. This for 4-2 USA. What a rack that was, dripping with tension. Shane Van Boning has won it. USA lead 4-2. Skylar Woodward will be breaking for the match in a moment. Well, Niels, what a narrative we've got going here. So much has happened. So many twists and turns, and you alluded to it earlier. We love to see the great potting, the great clearances, the break and runs. But you've got to have some of this as well. Yeah, I, I'm really a fan of this part of the game myself. I mean, it's just great to see these playing sh players showing their entire arsenal, not just running out. They're showing kicks, they're showing great saves, they're showing knowledge, showing intelligent solutions. And they have to do it under the pressure of the shot clock, under the pressure of wanting to win this first point. 4-2 USA. And we have Skyler breaking. The table hasn't been breaking great yet, so that's not a big plus. But if he makes the ball and stays in control, it could be over quick because Skyler's a fast player. But Michael, he's been sitting in the chair for a good 20 minutes also. That's the thing, you come in cold, your team might have rhythm, but you don't have any Gentlemen. because you've been sitting there for all of that time. So here we go, and what a statement this would be for Woodward to make, by the way. Like I said earlier, his disappointing performance Rack last year, seven. having been MVP Our for the previous two years in a row, in was the epitome of, of how that tournament team played USA out for the Americans. Could he the deliver hill. the first point here? Oh, made the eight in the side. Big, big moment there for Skyler because now he has a shot on the one. Even if he can't do anything offensive, which I doubt, he has control of the table. He can play a good safety. And I said he had been sitting for 20 minutes. Albin ran out the rack before on Skyler. That means that Skyler has been sitting for like 40 minutes without hitting a ball. So he is ice cold. I think he's going to try and use this 
nine seven and green six wall to get behind underspun that ball thing he's going to hit the nine yep and alvin steps to the table gotta be relief not having to kick a ball he gets to see it hmm interesting situation here well, with the year he's had alvin ocean is really expected to make a big contribution and to step up for his team this week he's been asked to do it in a big way very early on i don't think he has anything <laughs> offensive here i see a good <laughs> crowd going crazy with the extension <laughs> I see a potential safety here, Michael. He can hit this one a little bit on the right side. And the cue ball hits the short reel, makes contact with the three. That would stop the cue ball there. And then the one would come around. Nope, he's not doing that. There was the contact with the three. He did do that. He did do that, but just softer than I had in mind. Beautiful shot. Sometimes the overhead view is not that easy. Woodward had a very good run in the World Championship this year. Got to the quarterfinals. He had knocked out the defending champion, Fedor Gorst, along the way. And his run was ended in emphatic style by the man he's facing here. who he went on to become champion for the second time. Wow. That's what we call rail first. <laughs> he didn't roll that ball. He fired it in. And that is a tough shot on day one on this sliding table. Cruising between that six and nine for position on the two. He's got to come with another power stroke. And one thing about Skyler, he loves to hit those medium firm shots. Bam, bam, bam. He doesn't like to, the super finesse part of the game. He's better when he can shoot. He's only 28 years of age. But this is already his seventh Moscone Cup in a row. And those back-to-back -back successes that he was such a factor in in 2018 and 19, still the only ones he's won. He's in a great situation here, Michael. He pretty much stop shot or bring it forward about one ball. Now it's what we call like a zigzag shot. You go side reel, cue ball past the side pocket to the other side reel and shoot the six to his right there on the screen. This is the biggest shot of this rack. One, two's got a bounce. And we're seeing really good things from Team USA. Also from Europe, of course. Well, it was a false dawn for them last year when they won the opening team match. There it is. But they'll really be hoping that this sets the tone for what we're going to see here in London over the next four days. The Americans have come to play and they have made a big early statement. They've beaten Europe by five racks to two and have won the opening team match. First blood to the United States of America. It's